welcome to Dan Really Likes Wine, presented by Pick and Pay, and welcome to South Africa's answer to Hakkasan. This is Tang on Mandela Square in the heart of Santon, and it is the latest project of one Nikki van der Vol, who, in between being extremely good looking and hosting all sorts of parties and restaurants, has put together something rather special. And I have to start, Mr. Van der Vol, with a little bit of a confession here. Because when I heard you were putting this together and having loved Hakusan and loved Nobu and loved restaurants around the world where Asian has been taken, given a bit of flair, I thought, nah, on Mandela Square, Nicky Mandela, this is not going to be a real deal, surely. And yet I've been here twice already. I've had a really good time. You've produced something quite special. Thank you. I think, you know, you know it's interesting that you use Hakusan. You know, first time I dined, I think it was 2005. And ever since wherever I've traveled, whether it be Hakusan or Azuma or Nobu, I've always sought out those eateries in various capitals and I actually got fed up. It's just the clock, 12 o'clock, here we go. Uh, I got fed up that I had to fly, an 11 hour flight, in order to have good cuisine. But what I never understood, you know, in South Africa we've got very talented chefs, be it Asian, African, South African, and we didn't, we're not exactly reinventing the wheel here. I think, you know, I took an interpretation of various things that have been done already and put our own spin on it. So likewise with my wine, you know, we it has been done before. It's just doing it at a, at a certain level and with a certain passion and love. Now uh, you've shown those skills, those uh, those elements here in this restaurant. You've shown them before. So we know you're good at putting together restaurants. We know you're very good at wearing extremely tight black jeans. In fact, even Steve <laughs> Steinfeld, I don't know if you can get into some of yours. Uh, but what about Nikki, the wine man? Is, is this just a, a passing flirtation or is there a long-standing, genuine interest in wine? No, it's a long-standing, genuine interest. I fell in love with the wine lens as a child. I remember holidaying with my parents. We weren't the biggest wine drinkers per se but we would holiday in Franschhoek, Stellenbosch, and you know, visit all the great old wine farms. And you know, still to this day, it's my lifelong dream to own a wine farm, hopefully retire, hopefully still in South Africa. Um, and yes, obviously I started my restaurant and hospitality career when I was 20, and my love for wine uh, just grew from there, and obviously my knowledge. You know, wine is something, no matter how much you know, I think Michael Fridgen, who's here today, is still learning every day. And it was actually a gift from the godparents of my children, Anthony and Olive Hamilton Russell, who gave me as a gift the Westhead Level 2 uh, course. And, you know, I sort of sort of understanding wine better because I always knew what I liked, but it was understanding what those components were. And coming to the invitation, I mean, again, so I, I credit my travels like I did for the, the inspiration of the restaurant going to all various places. You know, I used to holiday quite a lot in the good old days when life was good in the south of France and traveling through France, you know, enjoying those rosés. And I never understood coming back to South Africa, we've got an amazing wine culture and wine industry, but rosé was always overlooked. It was always like an afterthought and a byproduct. And I would say in the last five years, certain producers have sort of uh, upped their game, but it's still a third or a fourth uh, varietal in this table. And with, with Mirabel, I set out to do a rosé driven uh, brand. And obviously we'll slot in things after, but you know, the, 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 the people who are making the wine for me, they, they, they farm the vineyards to make rosé. I think that's, that's where the difference lies. And what I couldn't quite articulate in the past, I sort of, from memory, you know, what we tasted, we tasted from 13 different blocks. So Peter Carson's is a winemaker, so I can't say I made the wine, but I did the blend myself. So I was very hands-on in, in what I wanted, and I was very specific about what I wanted. So, yeah. Your WSET2 includes a lot of areas outside of South Africa. It's always the biggest challenge for South Africans doing that exam. And a lot of it includes France. Provence is the area for which rosé is most immediately recognised. How much of an influence is that Provence-style rosé in what you were trying to put together here? Immense. It is a Provence-style style wine. So even the varietals that we use, uh, it's uh, Cinzo and Mouvedre, uh, Grenache, also being very, uh, uh, used in uh, south of France or Provence. Um, no, it's a Provencal style wine. So not too much acid, beautiful fruit, something you can drink from the morning till the evening without having a headache come two o'clock in the afternoon. Not too much sugar. 
That's an important bit. I mean, we're going to taste it together in a moment, but not too much. We're, we're well past largely the days of uh, a glass of rosé equaling fringe diabetes. It's uh, become something with a lot more nuance, a lot more subtlety, a lot Correct. more elegance. Finesse. Um, and what, what I love the fact is that you've gone somewhere uh, that's both the, the real up and coming area, they probably suggest it's already come in the Swartland, but you've gone for that Mouved, you've gone for that Sid, so you've gone for stuff specifically made for this. So it's it, it's very much a, a, a rose project. This is all so rose project. Great. It's a rose, it's a rose project, yeah. Is it the end of the road? Is it just rose or is there a. No, I a think for now road? I want to birth the brand with rose. I mean, I set out just to create a rose and, um, you know. I feel that it's a con it's, it's, I can express myself in that narrative because I felt that rosé is not being done justice in this country. I mean, people ask me why why not a Chardonnay, why not a Chenin Blanc? Because I think there are great producers out there doing those varietals justice. In this context, I had something to say. Uh, down the line, I'm a big Bordeaux fan. Uh, tougher challenge than creating a Bordeaux on on par with what some of them fantastic producers are doing. But yes, obviously, I mean, this is this is sort of a very long journey for me. It's a first step in a very long journey. You mentioned Olive and uh, the Hamilton Russell brand. Uh, she and Anthony have been, in fact, I've had lunch with them here before. There's more than just that in terms of family and friends linked to here. I believe the name has got a rather personal touch. Listen, yes, I mean, my holding company is under which Tang sits and obviously other brands that I will create or more Tangs is Miramar Collection. It's a name that I've loved for a long time. It's a place in California. It's also the place from Top Gun. It's just a name that I love. So if you take the first four letters, which is mirror, and you add bell, which means beautiful in French, you get mirror bell. But uh, fastidiously enough, when I checked if such a name existed in the French language, it means wondrous. So it was like a light bulb moment that went on and said, it has to be mirror bell. Mirror bell. And is there a, is there a bell thunderbolt? My right? daughter's name is Gabriella, and we call her bell. Oh. So mirror bell, my two babies. <laughs> I love that. All right, look, you've, you've talked a great game. You've sold us brilliantly. <laughs> But the proof has to be in what it Always. tastes like. So let's give it a crack. Ching. Here we go. So this is my very first glass of Nicky van der Volt's new rosé, which apparently will make me look five years younger by the time I finish the bottle. Mm. What are you picking up there? Picking up a desire to have a bit more of this, to be honest. <laughs> it's exactly what I suggested when I said that we find rosé in a different space. It's not overpowering, but it's still got plenty of body to it. Uh, to our channel, to and that's from the Mavedre. That's from the 25% Mavedre. It just gives it a little bit of a oomph, that a little bit of structure dance, right there. A little bit of character, yeah. broodiness. What, as I, as I tried to explain earlier, the style that I was looking for, I didn't want too much acid, because that will give you palate fatigue. So, you know, after a few glasses, you get that, as I said, palate fatigue. I don't want that. Also, I don't want it to be too sweet. So our, as it's sitting at 5.4 grams uh, per litre, residual sugar 2.4, and it's a very balanced wine. Also, don't want something with too much um, alcohol. So I think you know, if you look at the pH, you look at the, the the acid, the sugar, it's a very balanced wine. We didn't have to go post mortem after do the, doing the blend, adding more acid because at 5.4, I think we're on the cusp because we go it's all going 5.5, 5.6, and I'm I'm quoting verbatim from Peter Carsten. <laughs> I sound very smart here. You have to start adding sugar. And when I did my first tasting with Michael Fridgen, he's like, yeah. You pointed something out to me. The moment you start adding uh, to, to, to a wine outside of the cellar, that's when you, uh, you know, it stands apart. And you're so right. You know, if, if, from memory, the wines that I've drunk, where they've added sugar, that sugar will stand out quite predominantly. If you start, and I, want, I, I, I think from the blend, because we blended this from 13 blocks, we chose three in the, in the end. I personally can pick up the three different blocks in each little sip. But, you know, we didn't have to go after it and, 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 and fiddle with it. There's a gentleness to it since so in its red form that I think reflects really nicely in this as yeah. well. And that comes They're together cherry. with the Mouverdra to make for it a beautiful duet. And I love the colour as well. It's somewhere between sort of a pale copper and the colour of my Irish brother-in-law, Fergal, after he's been in Africa for about an hour. <laughs> uh, it's somewhere in that mix. Again, going to the colour. I mean, we, you know, a lot of guys play with the colour post post blending so we could have put fines in here and change it i was very happy with it sometimes it can be too pink so and you know, i'm not judgmental because sometimes it can be too orange uh, but this is the color that i set out for it's like a very slight salmony color 
That's glorious. It's also, I suspect, going to work rather well with a fair amount of food on your lavish and extensive menu. Uh, well, pick a couple idea. of things off it. If I'm coming around and settling in for an 11 hour lunch, uh, what are a couple of dishes you think are really going to be smashing with this? I would pair this, as you say, with most things on our menu, but one of the dishes that is a standout dish for us here is our tuna tataki. It's got a citrus ponzu uh, uh, onion relish with garlic chips. And this has got a very beautiful lemon twist finish to it. And I think it'll pick, pick up on the citrus ponzu. And interestingly enough, tonight and I did a pairing not too long ago for a gentleman who flew in from the Middle East. He booked up my whole restaurant for a date. Him and a girl, we booked up my whole restaurant. And we had to, for the amount he paid, we had to put up quite a, quite a set menu. And um, we got stuck at the Peking duck. Now Peking duck pairs normally very well, duck pairs very well with, um, with uh, uh, Pinot Noir, sorry, so, with the Pinot Noir. I mean, that's like cupcakes and icing. Yeah. And we actually, but it wasn't my, my rosé, but a very similar style of rosé. And we paired it and it was actually beautiful. So Peking duck in this, hey, listen, I mean, you sushi, everything. I, you know, the beautiful thing about this wine, it, it, it can play it up if the dish is too subtle or play down if the dish is very big. There's something that I picked up in this wine recently. It's, there's a salinity to it. And as any good chef will tell you, the moment you add salt to a dish, brings out a little bit of sweetness. And I think that when I spoke to the winemaker, I questioned that, that speaks to the, to the terroir. There's a lot of sodium chloride, so there's no natural occurring salt in the soils uh, in the Swatland, which you can pick up beautifully here. Well, if you've had the wine of Leo and Kale and you've enjoyed it, then you've got the winemaker doing similar justice to the Cinsa and Verdra coming together in the maiden effort of this Miravel Rosé. I think you're off to a flying start here, Nikki. Thank ching, you ching. for the wine. Thank you for coming. Thank you for the time here. Awesome. And here's to many more glasses to Hopefully, up. many, many more. So Zimbabwe's got some pretty famous exports. Andy Flower, Peter Nglovo, Rosala Miller, none of them quite as important as the man beside me. It's actually lovely to see you. Lovely to see you too as well. Keeping well? I'm very well and I'm, I'm, awesome. I'm enjoying this one. I'm interested to get your opinion. What were you thinking when you heard this hotshot restaurateur in Santon was making his own wine? And then how does what you're drinking compare to what you were thinking? Jeez, I'm actually amazed at Very impressive. Uh, my kind of style of a drink and yeah you did a very good job yeah tell people what you're getting in this glass for me it's it's you know it's it's not about the exuberance or you know the excitement of the food it's quite restrained it's quite subtle but i love the palate much mostly very refreshing saline you know it's like razor sharp acidity cutting through there and for me that's what i love for a rosé going into summer what more do you want and that understanding of where rosé is now, I think, is so important because it's it's a very different wine to where rosé was so ten years ago. Mm. And this this is really on point. Yeah, it's it's, it's it's serious stuff, you know. I mean, back in the day, you throw in everything you've left over to make a rosé, but this is much more focused, you know. It's elegance, and I, I actually tasted it uh, probably three months ago when you had the first batch, and it's amazing to see how it's evolving in the glass, and it's gonna get even better. Uh, we first met when you were at the Test Kitchen. You know the art of food and wine better than most. Drinking delightfully on its own. What about this as a food wine? Jeez, and you, you forget I worked at uh, Nobu during my heydays. Of course, <laughs> Asian food is yeah, best. Yeah, it's definitely this with the uh, teriyaki based dishes. It's amazing. Uh, ponzu dishes is amazing. It's got the lovely acidity and vibrance really, really to work well with uh, savory, sweet, or even salty dishes. So I think it's the perfect wine for an Asian restaurant, to be honest. So it gets Tanashi's thumbs up? Yeah, amazing. Why not? <laughs> there we go. I'll tell you what, Nikki, if Tanashi says this is good, you've done something right. No, it's amazing. Cheers to that. Cheers. Awesome. Well, the definitive voice on food in Johannesburg is the man who eats out 11 times a day. In fact, I think you've been here about a dozen times already at Tang. This week. Uh, this week. Well, yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about the restaurant very quickly. What are your thoughts on it? Oh, I love it. I think it's exactly what Joyberg needs. Um, it's got all the hip happening, you know, flash that Joyberg loves. But the food, I have to say, is spectacular. Is, is there substance to match the flash? There is definitely substance to match, match the flash. <laughs> uh, what's on the menu that, that you've really enjoyed? What do I really enjoy? The pecking duck is pretty much iconic and um, if you're up for a splurge the black cards with 
new soy sauce is yeah, as good as I've had. And what I actually really like doing is coming for a few small plates, a bit of sushi, tempura prawns, some tataki. Just it, it lends itself to that type of food where you just sit and order a whole lot and enjoy with the table. All washed down, of course, by some lovely wine. Yes. Hey, in Food's always an interesting space because it covers quite a broad spectrum. Finding that one wine that nails everything can be a challenge. Rosé is one that often comes into that conversation. Does this one fit the bill? I think so. I mean, it's a beautiful rosé to begin with, beautiful colour. I like that it's multi-dimensional. It's not that strawberries and cream that we often come to expect from rosé. Again, here's Steve making friends, you know. <laughs> but I, I like the complexity to it. It's definitely a wine that um, can stand up to food. And I think it would be, you know, as beautiful with sushi as it will to, you know, perhaps some Asian noodles, something like that. Would definitely be able to cut through the fattiness of, you know, the more rich dishes. And it's still light enough to complement, you know, light sushi, dim sum. Yeah, it's, I think it's a fantastic wine. And of course, knowing you and your dining habits, it yes. comes in a magnum, so it's perfect for well, lunch for one. Lunch for one, exactly, 100%, as you say. No, I think, I think it's a really cool evolution of what Nikki's doing with Tang. And I think it, it helps create that experience that I think, especially now, everyone's after. You want to go out, you want to have fun, brunch is going to be happening. You know, if it's not bubbles, brunch is synonymous with rosé, so <laughs> what more could you ask for? There you go, the endorsements just keep on coming. <laughs> Steve likes it. Everyone will. So we've heard the history, the background of this particular wine from Nikki. We've had some great endorsements from Tanachi and from Steve. But if you want to make or break a wine, you give it to one man. And with a simple look, he will tell you whether it's destined for greatness or you'll be using it for cooking at best. That man, of course, is Michael Frejohn. Lovely to see you, Michael. Well, Lovely to be here. Thank you. And it's an unusual place to find you on this sunny spring morning which is as good as or afternoon as Jova gets with a spring wine. Indeed, and a, and a wine that you had a bit of a, an early look at because you tasted this a while back, didn't you? I did a couple of weeks ago, in fact, probably a month or two ago. It wasn't yet labelled and I really was impressed. It's a hard thing to make a good rosé. Everybody thinks what you do is you run the juice off the skins as quickly as possible and there it is. But in fact, a good rosé is a, a constructed rosé in a way. It needs to be savoury and fresh. It needs to be either a red and a white or neither a red and a white. And it needs to have, and that's what this wine really has, a kind of salinity. It needs to be savory enough that actually you want to drink more of it. And whether you drink it just on its own or with a plate of food, that's the real test and that's the real success. I think they've managed to get that Provencal taste more than the Provencal color on the on the uh, first batch of this wine it's very good indeed before i get a little more detail on the wine from you just uh, talk to me uh, slightly about about south africa and rosé now because rosé has changed very much in the last decade uh, but i think people now understand rosé a lot better and as such perhaps a little more demanding asking a few more questions but where does rosé sit for you now in south africa it's it's still frankly a bit of a mess i did a line up on on wine wizard yesterday in fact of a whole bunch of rosés and I had everything from light reds um, to darker light reds to kind of sweetish pink wine. Um, the Provencal style, which is being done, tends to look a little bit more golden than pink and people don't understand that. But what we're seeing is through a number of different places, either a Rhone style, which is what this is, or you get those very fresh Cabernet Franc styles. So what I think we're seeing is a narrowing. And part of the narrowing is that we are getting freshness, savoriness as a prerequisite. We've moved away from those clunky, we couldn't make up our mind what to do with it, so we made a rosé. And this is a, a front runner, I think, in that Rhone style, because it's salsa based, which has got lovely freshness if you handle it early enough. And then the clever part of this wine is that there's 25% Mourvedre. And that's what gives it that extra, it's too exaggerated to say meatiness, but it's giving it that fullness without the richness, that sense that it's not even essent. And that's what this wine does to a tea. It's very well done indeed. Nicky's target was something he could drink the first bottle of of its own and the next four bottles of lunch. Does it do that? Does it deliver as a, a wine on its own and a food wine in the same glass? Well, in the case of Nicky, as long as he gets up late. but. 
I do have to say that it does meet that criterion perfectly. It's a wine that is extremely easy to drink, but not insubstantial as a result. That's the real trick. It's a tightrope walk. You want the wine to be super fine, but not so even essent that you don't realize that you've actually knocked up a bottle or two. You're, it's happy to realize that if you've been enjoying yourself, but you should still be getting a sense of the venosity of what's been produced. And this is venous. It is wine. It's not pink fruit juice. And that's a very important part of a good rosé. Well, I think that counts as an overwhelming Michael Freejohn endorsement. And based on that, expect Mirabel and Nikki to be listed on the New York Stock Exchange by this time next month. To join the Pick and Pay Wine Club, simply SMS your smart shopper number to 36775. It's absolutely free and you'll get for yourself three times the smart shopper points on every bottle of wine bought. You'll also get a 20% discount on 10 different wines each month, a 25% discount on a case of wine and a magnum, some terrific competitions and invitations to awesome events.